Hello, hello! Our Phidias Pete here, bound and determined to continue being too dumb to quit in XCOM 2. And you're probably saying, hey Pete, you know, being too dumb to quit isn't all that bad. Rocky was too dumb to quit, and despite being entirely fictional, that guy still got his own statue atop the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum. And you're not wrong, you're, you're right to remind me of it, but I'd like to remind you that uh, being too dumb to quit also got Rocky some fairly serious brain damage, and hands that shook like a bowl full of jelly resting atop Santa Claus's belly while he gets a lap dance from Mrs. Claus. And I'm just saying, Mrs. Claus has got some junk in a trunk, so when you get a lap dance from Mrs. Claus, she rattles the goods a little bit. Not that that's a bad thing. Also, that statue of Rocky, yeah, that's at the bottom of the steps now at the Philadelphia Art Museum. I can only assume having tumbled down them one night in a dizzy spell caused by its rampant pugilistica dementia. So maybe, just maybe, making a career out of getting punched in the brain isn't all it's cracked up to be. But I suppose, like Rocky, I'm also kind of an idiot, so maybe, again, like Rocky, making a career out of getting punched in the brain is my only choice. Somebody has to bring in enough money to keep Polly and pinky rings and toupee glue. That stuff doesn't pay for itself. So let's get back to work and look for the next fist to collide with my medulla oblongata and see just how bad the shaking of the hands is going to get. There's a bonfire out here we should investigate. You know, when you see a random bonfire, you should always investigate it. One, could be people burning someone at the stake, a situation which you may either want to A, get in on, or B, prevent, depending on, uh, you know, your particular personal proclivities. Or two, it could just be a roaring party, man. What if somebody's out there just having, like, the greatest weenie roast and marshmallow hoedown of all time, and you're missing out? Do you really think anybody's going to begrudge you a toasted marshmallow if you just wander up to a random campfire and there are folks there toasting a marshmallow? They're going to give you a stick and a marshmallow, man. And hey, free toasted marshmallow, what's not to love? I'm not going to investigate it right now because I do want to finish this supply drop. Avengers Very quickly, we'll get some cash. That way, maybe we run into the rare bonfire people who aren't as willing to share their delicious toasted marshmallows as would ordinarily be. And in that case, we could be like, well, could I perhaps purchase one of your delicious roasted confectionery puffed sugar treats? And they'll be like, well, give me a dollar. Here's a marshmallow. And be like, hey, you know what? Fair trade. Fine. I'm not flying back to Resistance HQ. I'm aware that there's... You know what? I was going to say I'm not flying back to Resistance HQ to check out the staff, but now I'm changing my opinion. Let's go see what we can buy for a little bit of fat cash. We got a lot of supplies here. We could buy an engineer. Yes. 230 supplies. Sold. Ludmilla is gonna, you know what, we can put Ludmilla to work busting rocks down in the old uh, engineering department here. We're gonna make that 230 supplies back. Also, we have sort of a surfeit of supplies currently. We can kind of afford to lose them. We could also put her to work in resistance comms, which is intriguing. We could also have her start expanding this, which I guess would allow us to build a workshop. We don't actually have a workshop yet, which is, uh, it's, it's kind of suboptimal. Alternatively, we could just build a workshop here. Then we get Advanced Warfare Center, Resistance Comms, and whatever we choose to build there, staffed for free. It's very definitely suboptimal placement of our Resistance Comms. Or it's, it's suboptimal placement of a workshop, but we're going to have so many engineers by the time we get these other things built anyway, it would probably just be completely irrelevant. You know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just build the workshop here. Is it suboptimal? Yeah, but this only costs us 150 supplies and one power. I think long term, it's... It'll be okay. There's an engineer available. Yes, I would like to have the engineer staff doing this if possible. Lidmilla, I lied. You're going to be the one engineer on the XCOM project who doesn't get drafted to the team and then immediately get thrust a shovel and a chop saw and sent down to do some back-breaking manual labor for like eight and a half months. Lucky you. So do we want to investigate the bonfire now? Or do we want to check it out later? Also, is it the bonfire of the vanities? This is the critical question. We have 103 alloys and 81 Illyrian. We could probably let that bonfire idle for a bit. Let's go finish making contact down in Mexico. We'll cross the desert, disappear into the tumbleweeds, and then we can tip the bottle and bite the lime. Little refreshments. I was going to make a... That was a refreshments reference, by the way. If you've never heard of the refreshments, check them out. Good band. Probably best well known for doing the theme song to King of the Hill, which is tragic because Nada is one of the greatest songs ever written. The flamethrower, though, supremely disappointing. I don't, I don't like flamethrowers. They're not very good. What is our next proving ground project? We're doing some experimental ammo. I'm shockingly okay with that. Let's queue up. Do we want to queue up another powered weapon? I'd really like to get a heavy weapon for our 
We're having some trouble with our rocket. I wouldn't mind getting another heavy weapon for the... Let's just do it. Experimental heavy weapon. It only costs one Illyrian core. We have... I was going to say plenty, but that's actually not true. We only have one more. And I want more experimental ammo, because I really would like to get armor-piercing rounds for both of our shotgun units. That's a little troubling. Keep an eye on that. Emmy Lou Juglick has recovered her from her wounds. This is fantastic. Judy Juglick is also back in action, which is doubly fantastic. XCOM's premier killer. We don't want her sideline. The Tigress has got to be out on the prowl. Thing. Both in a literal and figurative sense. We want her out on the prowl for victims and also, you know, out trolling for strange, too. Judy Juglick's got a huge sexual appetite and she needs, you know, she gets a little pent up and angry if she's not being regularly and routinely satisfied. Located. Yeah, we're going to go straight there, in fact. To serve mankind, recruits cost 10 supplies. Oh boy, that's the stupidest... I, I don't even understand why that is a continent bonus. By the time you can get that continent bonus, you don't need that continent bonus. By the time you can hit, you know, build a relay and have three contact regions, you don't need recruits anymore. Your need for recruits has already been long gone by the time that arrives. Communications capacity. Shut up, we can't Lily. establish any new contacts until we upgrade our system. Well, that's fine. We're going to just make contact with Brazil, and then if we want to, we can either do that upgrade or just kick one of our idle engineers into resistance comms. What's this mission, then? We have Operation Steel Saga. Extract a VIP from Advent City. All right, we can use another scientist, and this time, let's do ourselves a favor and not murder the man we're supposed to rescue. This time, guys, what do you say? If we have to extract a VIP, let's not just shoot him in the brainstem like we did to Judy Juglick. Let's actually try and bring this one back alive, fellas. This guy's willing to work for us, so shooting him in the brainstem is just a definitively a bad idea. Do we want to take the flamethrower instead of the rocket launcher? The answer to that question... Maybe. Let's see what it's capable of. How much damage does it do? So this does 4 to 7. Clip size, range 27, 4 tile radius. Not impressive. Four to seven. Uh, the flamethrower can you know, lay waste to part of the battlefield. I think lay waste may be a bit of an overstatement. It's useful against multiple enemies in close quarters. That's true. We can hit a lot of guys with it in a very close range, and we could overdrive up, fire the flamethrower, and then maybe punch a dude who's on fire, because it does set them on fire, but it's pointless against robots, and we have to be close to use it. I would feel remiss if I didn't do it at least one time. Also, shockingly, there is an achievement I still haven't gotten for kill one alien with every happy weapon. And I think the flamethrower is the one weapon we've never actually killed someone with. So, to hell with it. Let's let's give it a go. Um, Ma Juglik, why are you on the roster? Oh, Cyrus is probably hurt, isn't he? Right, so make utility items available. Weapons available. Armor available. Why are you on the mission? Uh, Jules, beat it for a second. Okay, we gotta take a look at the situation here, because shit is all jacked up. So we got the Tigress, excellent. We got the Wolf Pack, doubly excellent. Grandpa Juglick, you're on board. Where is Emmy Lou? I need my 50 eyes for you. I'm not getting any new chapters here. I need the next installment in her serial flash fiction. I gotta know whether Alexandra, uh, what was her name? Alexandra Tungsten and Christoph Green finally consummate their relationship. I gotta know if they find a way to make that contract work. Get an acid bomb. You're also gonna get some blue screen rounds. Little plasma grenade, nothing fancy. Jug, you know, yell is uh, she's a simple girl. Just give her an acid bomb and a plasma grenade, and she's ready. Be like, yeah, it don't take much to stoke my fire speed. I'm a, I'm a simple gal. Little acid grenade, nice plasma bomb. We'll go out and we'll blow up the town, then paint the remains red. Mag rifle, plasma grenade, no skull jack, yes. Mimic beacon, absolutely yes. And Ma Juglick is ready to roll. She's not quite as good as old Cyrus Juglick because she does not have cereal. Not quite the serial killer that Cyrus Juglick wants to be when he grows up. Like his hero, Billy Ray. Hey, Billy Ray Cyrus isn't a serial killer. Oh, oh, is that what you think? Yeah. You never looked at... When, when's the last time you took a bloodhound and dug around in Billy Ray Cyrus' backyard? You don't know how many dead hobos he's got back there. Could be zero. Could be, you know, dozens. We don't know. It's a mystery. I've got a conspiracy theory, and that's all it takes. It's just a, something that's not prove a, you know, it's not falsifiable. Prove to me that Billy Ray Cyrus hasn't murdered 40 transients. Prove it. How do you know how many bones he's got buried in shallow graves in his backyard? We don't know what he's getting up to back there. Miley Cyrus is surprisingly silent on the subject. Why is that, Miley? 
come forth. Just why don't you come forth and be honest about your father's serial killing? Is he or is he not a serial killer? How many mullets has that man murdered in his career? Inquiring minds want to know, Miley, why so silent? Huh? Huh? What, are you afraid to tell the truth? Taking our time here for Operation Steel Saga. We're going to Advent Security Block in Vancouver. That sounds like a terrible neighborhood to live in. It was like part of a regentrification project where they're they're trying to revitalize a rundown sort of area over by the docks. And they're like, oh, you know, this used to be uh, Turd Alley in Vancouver. It was the one part of Vancouver that's not nice. And we decided we'd go in there and revamp the place, but we, we went with the security block Venice motto. And I got to say, I don't know, the city planners, I'm not sure what they were thinking when they approved the tax bill for the project. There was like a referendum and whatnot. And, Everybody was like, oh, it sounds great, security block. And then we got to the reality of it and realized that the security block is not as attractive from a tourist standpoint as we would have expected. We thought we could channel some of that sweet Alcatraz kind of vibe where people would be like, come to the rock, and, and then bring that to Vancouver. But it turns out everybody's seen that movie, and they don't want any part of it. Are we spotted? Or did we just not start concealed, and I, I am an idiot? I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I was absolutely convinced we had concealment here. We definitely do not. Then again, the result of our catastrophic fuck up there is actually not going to be that catastrophic. Why can't you see that Archon from any tile? What the shit? The wolf pack is still concealed. How come nobody can see this Archon? You can see him. Why can Grandpa Juglik not see him no matter where we move him? I want him to go take a chain shot at the man. You can see from there and there and there. Never mind. The thing was just not up. Sometimes, XCOM, you make me a little salty. And by a little salty, I mean shockingly salty. The other thing we need to be concerned about on this mission, this would not be... I would not be surprised if we see an alien king show up here. I would not at all be surprised if an alien king is on the menu. Mod Juglik, you're not going to do anything. Wolfpack, we would like to conserve you for potential shenanigans later. Massey Ferguson, we could get some something out of you. EL. What if we just have EL come up and level the corner of this building with a grenade? That makes the sectoid a very soluble problem. But it does have the added disadvantage. Destroying potential cover and does it destroy access to the roof? It doesn't destroy roof access, which we, we do want to get. Saman Chatterjee will come back at you. Judy? We could have you. We could always have you just run and gun to this full cover and shotgun this man to pieces. Are we going to be able to get enough damage to kill him? My juglick on backup. We still have to get the sectoid, though. When it's all said and done, we still got to take care of the sectoid as well. Affirmative. This is a little risky. We could go for Grandpa Juglick and rely on him to hit the chain shot. 69. I forgot to very upset with myself because I forgot to equip the proper weapons on Judy Juglet or on EL. She's got the wrong is the wrong gun. All right, let's gamble. I just remembered that I fucked up. I remembered that I'm an idiot. It, it seems like the kind of thing one would not easily forget, but we did at least poison him and we got some damage out of it. I'm a little salty about missing that second shot in the chain, but yeah. Sometimes you gotta break the chain, Pete. Break the cycle of violence. If we go forward here, we're almost certainly gonna spawn a pod. What's our hit percentage? Terrible. If we punch, not evac, punch. 70%, much better. Let's punch from this tile. All right, Massey Ferguson, let's burn that cooldown early so we can get it reset as quick as possible, I suppose, is the goal. That was a mighty wallop right there. We've got this man down to six damage, and suddenly some of our problems are looking relatively approachable. EL, you're almost guaranteed not going to be able to hit that arc. Why can you? Why does it say that you can't see him? Is the Massey Ferguson blocking your line of sight? Where's the thing just fucked up again? Which one is it? The thing is just fucked up again. That's real irritating, actually. Okay, so Judy, I don't want you. Wolfpack, EL. It says you can't see him from this time. Well, suddenly you can. Hey, yeah. Never mind. My salt levels, XCOM, are really getting pretty, pretty profound on this one. The main problem I have with EL having the wrong gun, nice shot, by the way, is the fact that my main problem with her having the wrong gun 
She doesn't have a lot of bullets. It's it's actually the lack of ammo that's m most problematic. We could just run and gun and shoot this man in the spine. What are the odds we spawn another pod? Well, even if we do, I suppose it's not the end of the world. Actually, what if we just chop him? Can we kill him with, by just chopping him? We can chop him from there. It can't miss and it guarantee kills him. Oh, never mind then. We'll just do this. This is vastly safer. Miss Juglick, if you would, go and hack this man into a pile of steamy, steamy sausage meat. That's the, that's just what we were looking for. J okay, looks like uh, breakfast is sorted for tomorrow. The Juglicks are going to be having themselves a nice heap and serving of sectoid sausage. Also, Grandma Juglick here has the stock, so she can't fail to get the kill. You're taking three damage either way, Archon. We're putting you in the ground, dog. And free loot. Did the Massey Ferguson loot? Oh, he did. Grabbed himself an Illyrium Core, a superior hair trigger, which we might consider equipping, and an advanced stock, which ultimately we'll probably just wind up getting sold. Still, just talking about our lack of Illyrium Cores, and we did manage to pick up a bonus core, and we also managed to conserve Silas Juglick's concealment, which is fantastic. All right, Silas the Scout, y'all got to get up there and do some scouting for us. Meanwhile, Chatterjee, you apparently do not set off our... Con yeah, well, you know what? I'm not even going to risk it. I would run him in over by the civilians, and he could be like, Hello, civilians. Look, I'm definitely one of you and totally not escaping under the cover of uh, XCOM Extraction. We're just going to end our turn. I don't really feel like having Judy take a move that potentially spawns another pod. This is why we kept Silas's concealment. We conserved it for a reason. The reason being, we want him to scout. There is no way for us to get over here without getting spotted. You gotta be shitting me. Nope, the civilians have us completely boned. I mean, we could get into the... Hey, if we're going around this window into this building, why would that potentially set off... I mean, this window's already broken. If we do this, then path to here, we're still concealed. Take that move. Moving on target location. So Judy Juglick's sausage generating slash actually has some additional benefits. Is there any way for us to make it to the rooftop now without setting off the alarm? Nope. But we can at least run around the inside of this building without fear. Moving on target location. Alright, Silas, get our eyes on some enemy. I'm spotted. Yeah, you're not just spotted, you're actually completely boned. Spotted, honestly, is probably among the least of your troubles. Alright, well, that was troubling. So, Activa S, if we overdrive you, which I'm very strongly considering doing, we're not going to be able to get a punch at the end of the overdrive, but we could wreck all of the terrain between here and create a path for ourselves. Yeah, we gotta... Alright, speaking of Miley Cyrus, surprisingly silent on the subject of her father's serial killing. Yes, yes, but it, it's time to take a book from the page of Miley. We're coming in like a wrecking ball on this one, bad boy. Make a hole. Through the wall. Yes, I'm aware that we're on overdrive. Thank you. Can we get a flank shot? No. We could come up here and flamethrower. How big, specifically, is this flamethrower gonna be? Our goal was to get a kill with the flamethrower, though. It's really long. If we could get an angle, we might be able to hit both of those guys. So let's move to here with our wrecking ball pattern. Don't mind me. I'm just a Kool-Aid man. Can we hit them both? Nope. Too narrow. All right. Well, that's uh, surprisingly disappointing. We will have a good flank shot at the Codex. Maybe we can get it to teleport to a more advantageous position. Seems unlikely. It's going to have a very minimal amount of health after the clone, though, two apiece. One of them did help us out a little bit. All right. So that's one. We're going to be able to take care of you. No problem. The problem we're looking at, though, is that Viper. Not sure how we're gonna deal with it. We we really sort of have nothing in that we have like no additional support whatsoever. Judy Juglick could run and gun him. Yep. Judy, you're carrying this team fucking hard here, girl. I'm well aware of the hardness of the carrying, and honestly, I fully appreciate the fact that you're willing to just pick up this team and haul them through this mission by main force. 
So, Judy Juglick can't miss. 9 damage minimum, 11 damage, 88% to crit. This is almost certainly a kill. Yep. Oh, we can get some of Ma Juglick's rattlesnakes, too. Man, we're, we're getting things sorted from a dinner perspective on this mission. Sectoid sausage, rattlesnake stew. Ma Juglick is going to be in the kitchen whipping up uh, some dishes of delight. Is there any chance, Ma Juglick, that you can get a shot at that codex in any way? This one, specifically. Not unless we were to detonate a big chunk of the building, which we probably can't do. We've got to, I mean, we can take out the codex. Let's try and take out the codex with a minimum of resource usage. So let's have Emmy Lou Juglick, 89%. That's comfortable enough. If it hits, that guy's dead. So of course it did not hit, because worst possible outcome is worst possible outcome. All right, then, I guess Grandpa Juglick is going to come forward. Grandpa? Um, why, why is our targeting shit all dicked up here? Grandpa can't miss, so it probably would have been better to just have Grandpa open things up. Is there any way we could get a shot at that codex? Any possible square that lets us just have vision on the enemy. That's all we need. Ma Juglick can kill it if we can just get it in sight. Alternatively, we could whip... Somebody's going to wind up getting flank shot here. The Codex is going to teleport. Moving to designated position. We're gonna, all right, I'm going to do a little gambling here. I'm putting Ma Juglick on Overwatch. Saman Chatterjee, we're just going to bring you over here and have you probably hunker down. I'm going to take a gamble here that the Codex, rather than going for damage, tries to empty our weapons. I don't think that's their preferred behavior, however, when there are no enemies. When there's when it has no allies, I don't think that's what it preferred to do. My guess is it's probably going to teleport and shoot. Or it's going to point at us menacingly. What are you actually doing here? Oh, it's fine. Take your time. I agree. This is a situation that considers you know, warrants careful thought. He's going to take a flank shot at the scientist? Fine. Oh, nope. She went for the ammo. All right. I don't, you know what? I don't even really care. That's 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 really what I was kind of hoping to draw out. I'm, I'm shockingly okay with this. Ma Juglick, why don't you move up here? Take cover behind this garbage can. And you can just reload then. Judy Juglick's going to continue to pick this team up and haul them around like an like a angry baby. Got a, got a dirty nappy, guys? Is that what it is? You got to have Judy Juglick carry you into the bathroom so you can hit the changing table? Oh, it's fine. Oh, come on, Pete. Man, that was unnecessary. Changing table? That's just... Uh, that, it's real insulting, dog. Y'all ain't got to be like that. I don't really want to go forward for fear of spawning potentially another pod. But at some point, if we're going to kill this thing, we, we kind of have to do it. So let's... Did you do it in a gonna say a better fashion but the answer is no if you go the other way you actually can't get around to flank we could get a cheap flamethrower kill here if we, if we were gonna achievement whore also the the whoring of the achievement would have the added benefit of being incapable of missing the problem is i don't want to put great shot by the way yeah, well observed well we should have gone for the flamethrower because of the can't miss thing but the other thing i didn't want to do is put a line of flaming Acid between myself and my ultimate target. Judy Juglick, what if you just slash this person? That, that'll that do. It can't miss. This time, the Codex is dead, regardless of what happens. I didn't want to put a giant raging gasoline fire between me and the target of my mission. Target neutralized. No need to risk spawning another pod, Judy. I'm just go over here and take cover behind this pole. She's carrying. She's carrying hard, man. She's carrying this team like a really good Farah in Overwatch. Emmy Lou, you gotta reload. You don't have an abundance of bullets anyway, so theoretically that Codex's maneuver to empty your weapon didn't really cost us all that much. Low opportunity cost. Chatterjee, um, here, just come up here and stand by the Massey Ferguson. You can admire the massive piece of equipment that is the Massey Ferguson. Silas, your concealment is blown. At this point, why are you unwilling to just crash through a window Kool-Aid man style? Is there some particular oh, yeah. reason? Or is it just because there's like a potted plant in the way and for you, you are not capable of vaulting a hedge? 
Oh, good. Just what we needed. Alien King. All right. Well, I've been waiting for him. I fully expected him last mission, and he didn't show up. He's due. Target him before he has a chance to run. Don't worry. We're, we're all over it. So, what would I love to do to this guy? Ultimately, I would love to set him on fire so that he takes burning damage on every single one of his subsequent turns. The problem is he will get an action before we can set him on fire. That action will almost certainly be to rope Silas Juglick in. If he ropes Silas Juglick in, the problem that we then find ourselves in, once roped, Silas Juglick, we can't, we can't set the Alien King on fire because it will also set our own unit ablaze. So what if we go for a slash here? It's four to six damage and honestly, probably not even worth taking. We might be better off to just shoot from here. It's considerably more damage. What if we sent Judy up for a slash? How much? Seven to nine. Not that much more. Also, it has the added disadvantage of getting Judy guaranteed injured. Ah, oh, Grandpa Juglick, we need your frost bomb so bad here, buddy. All right, somebody's going to have to take one for the team. Tired of around. We got to get Grandpa Festus up here with his frost bomb. This is what we're carrying the frost bomb for. The ruler reactions. What's he doing? Oh, that was nothing short of huge. He took the shot and whiffed like a champ. All right, Grandpa Juglick, get the frost bomb out there. You can catch the Viper King and one of his little cronies. Suits me. I'll take Viper King and crony action. Thank you. You are in Frozenated. We would have loved to have Grandpa be able to follow that up with a sweet, sweet grenade shot, or like a chain shot would have been beautiful, but it's just not going to happen. Now we got to make a decision. Do we want to come up for the flamethrower shot? Is it going to be long enough to catch them all? Is it long enough to give us the Pokemon advantage? It will be. All right. I'm going for the burning so we can get the fire damage on the king early and start stacking some dots. He misses this turn. He's frozen for two more turns, actually. So we've got one more opportunity to take an action before we set him on fire. We should try and maximize our output. If we run and gun and shot... No, you know what? Let's just go for the fire. My concern is what if this thaws him? It probably will, ultimately. Nope, he can be frozen and on fire at the same time. That's pretty solid damage. Ma Juglik, we could bring you forward and put you on Overwatch. Then you would get a shot at the man, regardless of what he does, but it doesn't really seem that useful. Alternatively, we could just have Silas Juglik come over here. This corner cover. Nah, his shot's going to be terrible. Emmy Lou is who we need up here. We need somebody who could put some mad damage on this guy. Do I really want to take a move with Saman Chatterjee here? We could make him a potential victim. I don't want somebody getting pulled into the tile with that guy and set on fire. That would be horrible. Judy, if you could only see the man. You know what, Judy Juglik? Don't you have Salvo? Can you hit these guys with a... Can't catch the back guy. You know what? Go ahead and flashbang him. Salvo, this won't cost Judy her turn. She can check this grenade and then still have an action. Let's get some disorientation out there and see how he responds. Oh, we had one more freebie that I... Oh, that was suboptimal. Wolfpack. I don't really care about shooting that guy. Honestly, I, I, at the end of the turn, I think Wolfpack is probably going to have to throw Mimic Beacon or Ma Juglik. Ma Juglik is definitely the better choice for that. All right, Wolfpack, you're going to take one for the team here, champ. It's time to run and go. I want you right here. You know what? Let's get you in better cover. Is there a spot you can shoot from that has a little better cover opportunity? Not really, actually. I do want the flanker. Running. All right, Silas. You're probably going to get roped here, which is fine, because we're going to use that roping then to bust. What are you doing? Are you going for the dude? No. <gasps> he just moved. This is huge. Silas Juglick, shoot him in the heart. 94% for a shot in the back, 54 to crit. We're getting some solid damage out of this. Or we're going to get four damage out of this. That didn't do much. It, in fact, did not do much. You are not wrong. He is still disoriented. 
and has missed another tongue grab at Judy Juglick. EL can't do anything. The Tigress? If we whip an axe at him as a freebie, 80%. Acceptable because it's a free action. This is why we bring the axe. Five free damage. I'll take it. We got him down to 10. Theoretically, one good shot here brings him down. Just one good shot is all we need, guys. One top notch, excellent quality shot. I don't want to have Judy take. I don't want to have her shoot that. I don't want to take that shot. All right, Ma Juglik. I'm on the move. This is not a great idea, but we need we need somebody to buy us time and we need to reposition. He's still disoriented. And he's just moving. Why are you just moving around like that? Don't get me wrong. I, I don't hate it. Seven to nine. Fifteen percent chance to crit. Can't miss is the important part. It does leave us a terrible cover. And there is still this guy back here. I mean, somebody's taking some wounds on this. We, we just have to... Kind of, when you fight an alien king, somebody is going to get hurt. That's just the way it goes. Let's do this. I'm all about the can't misses. We've already gotten way luckier than we really had any reason to suspect we might get. If he does anything at all, he's going to try and beat King. Yeah, he's going to make the kill. Well, you just, you, you just sealed your doom. You summoned the portal, but that's why we brought Ma Juglik up. She can see you, and it doesn't matter what you do, Alien King. Ma Juglik is going to bring you down. Three damage on a miss. Suck it. How does it feel, Snake Man in the back? Huh? How does it feel to watch your god die? It's over. Absolutely. That's all you have to say, Bradford? Is just, it's over? And then Emmy Lou Juglick follows it up with a disappointing absolutely? That's pretty fucking uninspired, guys. Shouldn't you be a little more elated? Nah, Pete, we Juglick's a practical folk, man. We ain't too worried about it, y'all. We know everything gonna turn out okay in the end. Everything's gonna be all right in the end. It's a little like a Weezer song. We always knew the old boy was doomed. Wow, this really sucks. We killed the Viper King and are still in a tragic position defensively. This guy is probably not going to miss. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that may have set us on fire as well. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got some challenges here. The fire is not spreading. It actually went out a little bit. We have some challenges. I'm not going to lie. Mimic Beacon is very definitively going to be required uh, reading here. We're going to need quite a bit of the Mimic Beaconing at the end of this turn. And in the interest of that, I think we got to go punch Silas Juglik free. No, no, definitely no. Absolutely no. Yes. Don't, okay, XCOM, don't be giving me a bunch of misclick shit here. I just simply cannot afford it at this juncture. We can't have melee attack misclick nonsense going on. Nice shot. Okay, we freed the wolf pack. The wolves are loose. Ma Juglik, we're going to bring you forward and put you on Overwatch, I think. Is there any advent up there? No. And in fact, we can't afford to have you go on Overwatch. We're going to need that Mimic Beacon. So if we're going to double Mimic Beacon, and we are going to double Mimic Beacon, we got to try and optimally position ourselves for the takedowns. What can you see? Just that Viper, but you have an 89% chance to kill it. I'm okay with this risk. We do need to get that man dead. Brilliant. That's fantastic work. I'm, I'm proud of everyone. Good job, guys. Good job. Good jury or... Okay, thanks, Coach C. Sure thing. Well, that was heart-wrenching. Emmy Lou, can you... You can't even see an enemy. I don't suppose you could by chance hit that man with the world's greatest grenade? Well, yes, you can. Can you hit that man with the world's greatest grenade and not also simultaneously cook all of our friends? Sir. Yes. All right, do it. Drag out. We should be able to get four damage out of a plasma grenade and a kill for EL Juglick here. I hate wasting a grenade on one guy, but what's got to be done has got to be done. Viper Corpse dropped. Emmy got her. Okay, fantastic. Got ourselves a promotion. We didn't really destroy any potential loot. Hey, Cyrus, you want to uh, just flick the, uh, flick the Mimic Beacon here? Thanks. We've got that entire Archon to somehow deal with next turn. I'm not sanguine about our chances, if I'm being perfectly frank. But we're going to need even more Mimic Beacon, so Ma Juglitz, let's put that one out there. 
And this is why we're rolling with two, just in case the old uh, Alien King show up, a little unexpected, uninvited guests to the party. We got to be prepared to deal with them. Also, we only have eight turns here to complete this extraction, I'd like to point out. Judy Juglick, why do you still have an action? Doesn't seem like you should, but the fact that you do is great because that means one of these codexes okay. is about to get fully eliminated. Yep, yep. I hope you didn't need your spine, Mrs. Codex, because you don't have it anymore. Judy Juglick has given you an ex nation And since we have an abundance of Mimic Beacons on the field and they are going to get shot at, no disadvantage into having Judy Juglick well, just implacable her way to a more advantageous position. There's no way this is going to spawn more pods. I think we're at our limit on that shit. Worked over the Viper King pretty good. I'm feeling top-notch about the way this has gone so far. One very minor injury is the only ill effects the team has suffered. That one was a wallop. All right, Mimic Beacon staying strong. Let's see what these codexes decide to do. You're gonna shoot at this thing? That's fine. You're not gonna be able to kill it. And also you have signed your own death warrant because Judy is now gonna come and shoot you in the heart. Unless somebody else can get the in heart shooting. Grandpa Juggler. Double 65s is bad. Double 61s is also bad. Can you, uh, we could move you here, have some cover, still see the Archon. A slight on. elevation advantage, which will give you a, a little additional bonus to hit. No. Double 65s. That's really not that good. Let's run that risk after we see what happens with the Codex here. We don't want to clone the Codex. Under any circumstances, we don't need another target. Our best bet is to just have Judy fall back Moving and give out. another Codex a spinectomy. Paging Dr. Juglick, paging Dr. Juglick, Dr. Juglick to the ER. We need a spinectomy stat. Oh, there you go. Man, Judy Juglick is all about one shot in Codexes. It's it's like her go-to move. She's like, you got a Codex? Judy Juglick will solve your Codex problem. I'm Judy Juglick, and I'll solve any Codex problem for only 19.95. Oh, that's right. You got... Five codexes, six codexes, seven codexes. That's all. Get them for one low price. That's the Judy Juglick guarantee. Every codex in your armor killed for $29.95. Well, that counts as a hit. So we got 11 damage and the poison. All things considered, that's respectable damage output from Grandpa Juglick. That man is now thoroughly enraged, but man, what are you going to do? What's your hit percentage like from here? Bad. Well, let's get it as good as possible. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm willing to forego cover entirely on this one. I think we're gonna be okay. Also, Silas is already hurt, and unless there's gonna be something that spawns that straight up kills him, you've gotta be fucking shitting me. I got nothing. Great shot. Silas. Good work. Moving on uh, target. Yep. Good effort. Good effort today. Why don't you uh, take a lap and then hit the showers? And by that, I mean probably get killed by this uncontrolled rampage of Narcon. If you did see the Massey Ferguson Activa S whiffing a 94% shot, did you? Huh? Did you? Did you see him whiffing the 94%? No, because he didn't miss. That's why. Judy Juglick, once again, we're going to probably have you go for the guaranteed grenade damage. This is... Uh, I, you know what? I probably shouldn't be complaining. Ju EL Juglick is doing a fantastic job here. She's bringing up damage when we desperately need it. It's got four. You're like, Pete, that didn't even kill the Archon. That's okay. Ma Juglick's going to be able to wallop him off. She can get line of sight on him for sure. Can you see him from this tile? Game says no. What about here? Yeah. Oh, game also said... Wait, what's going on? Ma Juglick, I'm counting on you here. Okay, the game was just lying to us. Straight up lying. Straight up lying. Once again, game, you and your deceptive line of sight bullshittery. I've had enough of your nonsense, game. That, that's, you know, that's unacceptable. Oh, my juglick actually straight up hit. Yeah, you know me, Pete. I ain't one to muck about. Not one for any tomfoolery or otherwise, you know, shenaniganery. I'm pretty straightforward gal. I like street things. I like to clean it up in my kitchen after the whole family's been in for a good meal. And I say that completely facetious. I actually don't like that at all. I really wish they'd help me out, goddamn lazy sons of bitches. But I also like a little bit of corn shine shack sex with old Grandpa Juglick after the end of a long day. 
And of course, I love me a mason jar filled with delicious corn liquor, just like all jug licks. Some things, Pete, are universal. I can't believe we have another pod and six turns to extract to this rooftop. Are we going to be able to get these guys in six? I don't know. This is... It's going to depend a lot on what we can get out of Grandpa Juggling. Like, are you going to be able to get a grenade that far down range, Grandpa Juggling? The answer to that question is yes, absolutely. So we're going to forego the quality cover. Grandpa Juglix can come over here and drop the grenade. Man, we're playing very aggressively here. Probably stupid. Oh, you can't get it far enough downrange to kill him. God damn it, Grandpa Juglix, you treacherous son of a bitch. I was counting on everybody getting hit by this, but no, no. I have to be one tile sh Yeah, Grandpa Juglix, my salt levels. It's not good for my blood pressure, son. We did get some solid damage there, though. All right, Ma Juglix. You probably won't even be able to see anyone. I would love to get you close enough to go Skulljack a dude, but that's simply not going to happen. Wolfpack, we've got a couple options with you. Run and Gun is off the menu. But we're not even going to need to Run and Gun. We can just advance to here, and somebody's getting now. shotgunned in the brain. We are going to have to overdrive the... You've got to be fucking kidding me! Unfucking believable Absolutely unfucking believable Infinite enemies, I guess, then. Okay. Well, we're really fucked now. I had not expected there to be any possible way that could have spawned an additional pod, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna take this 87% shot, because it ain't getting any better. Didn't even get the kill. Brilliant. Well, that's, uh, some top shelf X coming right there. We are so dicked. I can't believe that there. I can't believe there are that many enemies on this map. Take this shot, Ma Juglik, because that's at least one enemy that's not going to be shooting at someone. We can at least get the one, I suppose, and we've got a chance that Wolfpack digs us out of a little hole here if he does some shotgun surgery on this shield bearer. He's at least in full cover. There's our shotgun surgery. Still leaves us with way too many unattended enemies. What do we want to do with you? You know, we'll come back to your implacable move. Activa S, you absolutely have to overdrive here. Because I need a sacrificial lamb in your aid. You have the repair ability. So where do we want you to stand? Let's get you over here. Actually, no. I want you closer. Come here. Reload. And then if we can get any kind of shot out of you at all. We're, no, we're not. All right, just move forward and flank a bunch of dudes then. We're inviting our own destruction. Wolfpack, I'm not sure we're going to have you move. Chatterjee, just get to the fucking roof already. It's going to take us a while to climb to that rooftop, shockingly. How do, uh, okay. There's, like, this is the only access point to the roof? Brilliant. Well, let's move Chatterjee up. Maybe we can get lucky and have somebody take a poke at him. We got you and the Tigress. Judy, okay, Tigress does have a run and gun available. We were counting on the run and gun. We're also going to have to count on the kill here. All right, Judy Jug, look, we're going to need your phenomenal speed to come and contribute. A I was going to say come and contribute a kill, but we actually could have just slashed and got basically exactly the same got output. It. We're going to need the world's greatest shot right here. This is going to have to really be a good one, Judy. We can negate his cover bonus by just shooting from here. 50% chance to crit, 99 to hit. We really need to crit here. Ah, oh, heartbreaking. That, 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 was, that was real bad. One short of the promised land. So I have to assume the Massey Ferguson is going to take a whole truckload of damage here. All right, three. Some of it's getting stopped by armor. This guy can take a beating. Yeah, you're, you're going to shoot a Ma Juggler? No, oh, you marked Jolene. Shooting at Grandpa Festus. Okay, no, don't bother to shoot at the giant robot that's standing there right in front of you, begging to be shot at. That's fine. And shooting at the robot. What, what, eh. Critically wounding Grandpa Juglick is definitively the wiser choice. 
I say that without hyperbole, by the way. It is definitively the wiser choice. Who has Shadow Step? Judy Juggler has Shadow Step. All right, Judy. We can't afford to have any Overwatch. Come over here and get rid of this Overwatching unit with a shot to the spine. If it weren't for Judy Juglick, the team here would be absolutely eradicated. She is all over the battlefield, bringing damage where damage is needed. Overwatch has been removed thanks to the destruction of your corporeal form. Implacable move, which unfortunately we cannot use to reload. Grandpa Juglick, you're real banged up. Here I come. Yeah, here you come, Grandpa Juglick. Oh, here I come. Oh, Pete, here I come. It's all about Grandpa Juglick. Sure, the enemy done got some good licks on him, but now it's time for Grandpa Juglick to get a little payback, boy. I'd prefer you to not need payback, Grandpa Juglick. Why don't you just pay your bills when they're due instead of to borrowing money to pay it back at a later date? You're coming at it for like wimpy from Popeye style. I will gladly pay you Tuesday for some damage today. No, don't do that. Just, just give, give, give them a dollar, Grandpa Juglick. They got a value menu. You can get the hamburger for a dollar, Wimpy. You don't you don't have to you have to mortgage your future for a delicious hamburger. Silas Juglick, by the way, one tile short of not needing to use a running gun here. Ah uh, I'm salty about the damage, but honestly, we did fight an alien king on this mission. We we should bear that in mind. This was a ton of advent troopers and an alien king simultaneously, and considering considering that. I think we've done probably better than I'm giving myself credit for. Ma Juglick, you're going to come over here and drop a heal on Grandpa Juglick just in case there's some other pod mysteriously fucking lurking in the wings because at this point, shit, there probably is. And now we just got to get everybody to the damn rooftop and get the hell out of here. I'm also worried about a potential pod of reinforcements, one of the other reasons why Grandpa Juglick is getting healed. Activa S, get your ass up here to the rooftop. You need every friggin' aim bonus you can possibly get. Also, if somebody's going to spawn a unfor here to unforeseen pod, I should vastly prefer that you be that someone. Although, if there are more enemies on the map at this point, my salt is going to be just unspeakable. All right. Chatterjee, you're gone. Tigress, you're on an implacable move. Get over here. Thanks for showing me the civilian slowly wander back into the cafe. He's like, there's a terrorist attack, and I'm stuck in a Starbucks. Well, this is bad because one terror attack and the potential for catastrophe to my body. I could be exploded by a suicide bomb or some other kind of vastly undesirable end result from this particular encounter. But you know what? I can also steal some coffee. Fuck it. I'm going to go. You know what? I think a, a, a sweet package of Starbucks perfect brew is, is worth risking my life for. Ma Juglik, you're not extracted. Grandpa Juggler, can you even make it to the... Well, you can make it to the roof, but not the extraction zone. Good to go. Just everybody get to wherever you can. In fact, you know what, Ma? Let's go ahead and beat it. I want to clear tiles. We got to make room. This guy casually strolls away. What are you doing on a rooftop at this time of night, by the way? Just casually chilling on a rooftop. Late at night, in the middle of a terror... That guy's complicit in something. There's no way that guy's on the up and up. That man is up to something. He's, he's, you know, he's up to some kind. He's no good, Nick. No need to ask twice. Just hanging out on a rooftop in the middle of a terrorist attack. Mm, that's Ten fucking four. shady, dog. Okay, wolf pack. Get you up here. Location confirmed. Activa. No, I'm, we're gonna try and extract all. Grandpa Juglick, why can you not move? Are you the only person who couldn't make it? Yeah, well, Pete, when you got a wooden leg like that, you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta hold on there. It takes, a, it takes a man a little extra hobbling. I don't like to advertise the fact that I got the prosthetic limb, but, uh, well, you know, I lost mine in a horrible thresher accident back in aught seven. Aught seven, Grandpa? Yeah, I mean, 2007. You know, I, I guess I should say, I can't say aught seven. I should say not seven. It's the naughties. That's what we call them now. Everybody's like calling them the naughties. I think it's the stupidest thing of all time. Wasn't even a particularly naughty era. I feel like the 90s were maybe more naughty than the naughties, if you know what I mean. The president all getting head in the White House, firing ropey jits and jism, national scandals and whatnot. The rise of the pornographic empires, what with the VHS tapes becoming popular and things of that. Really was more naughty. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Three soldiers wounded, nobody killed, 16 aliens taken out, one of them the alien Viper King. Operation Steel Saga is a steely saga. For the Juglet clan, or rather just another entry in the Steely Saga of the Juglet clan. 
I don't know how steely the Juglicks are. I mean, they might be really into Steely Dan. That's probably the closest the Juglicks get to Steely. Hey, XCOM, what do you... Oh, there you go, thanks. So, most damage, Judy the Tiger's Juglick. And I think it's, like, not even a competition. Most attacks, also the Tigress. Move the furthest, also the Tigress. Most under fire, Cyrus the Wolf Pack. I think the Alien King missed two tongue grabs on him, so that's possibly true. Everybody's all smiles. Ma Juglick, if only you had been the more valuable, more capable, more desirable Cyrus Juglick. I think the mission would have gone a little bit better. You say more desirable than Ma Juglick? You know, for an older gal, Ma Juglick's really got the goods. Yeah, but Cyrus Juglick has got the goods too, man. He's got that sort of doughy Billy Ray Cyrus physique. Just can't resist it. Ma Juglick's a little more svelte. And wrinkly. The wrinkles are, you know, a little off-putting. Touching her skin is like uh, caressing the top of a bowl of gravy that's been sitting on the counter for a couple hours out of the refrigerator. It's all sticky and yucky. Yeah. Everybody's back. Oh yeah, the Massey Ferguson got the shit beat out of it too. We should have used the repair ability and the couple extra turns we had to get the Massey Ferguson to patch itself up, but I straight up forgot that he had it. Grandpa Juglick got a... Holy shit, Grandpa Juglick has run and gun. That's really, really good, actually. Grandpa Juglick can run and gun and then hail of bullets or salvo. Hail of bullets is interesting because it's a guaranteed hit. It takes a ton of ammo, though, and I do love my salvo. You know what? Yeah, we're taking salvo. Run and gun, though. That's straight up amazing. Grandpa Juglick runs and guns, runs up and just chain shots a bitch right in the face. Yeah, Pete, who's making fun of my prosthetic leg now? You're just talking about how slow I am. Suddenly I've gone fucking six million dollar man on this shit. It's gonna be cha 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 cha. And then I run 70 miles an hour down the highway and jump up and grab a bank robber off the back of a fleeing truck. You're jealous as hell, I can tell. So, chain shot, absolutely. I will take chain shot over volatile mix in 100% of cases. Not that I think volatile mix is particularly bad, I just think chain shot is that good. Commander. Having successfully recovered one of Dr. Ballin's genetically modified test subjects, I am mm -hmm. eager to begin conducting an autopsy as soon as possible. Yeah, Dick, I know you're it eager to begin conducting things as quickly as possible in 100% of cases. Notes, I will gain an even greater understanding of just how she managed to accomplish these. This is Necronomicon changes. territory, Dr. Tigan. Didn't we have this discussion about Dr. Volan and the fact that she's into a lot of things man was not meant to know? Hello, Maybe this is here. just another example of one of those things, Dick. Maybe this is just something we, sh we shouldn't care how she achieved these results. What we should really care about is that the problem has been solved. Don't don't open that particular well. You don't want to you don't want to you're going dwarves of Mori on this one. You're delving too deeply, bro. I don't know. I'm troubled, but I'm going to wrap things up. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, your support does really mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see Dick Tigan unleash the Balrog, which sounds vaguely sexual, Dick Tigan unleashing his Balrog. But if you'd like to see that, you might consider subscribing as well. Post new episodes of XCOM every single day right now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.